techno and electro artist who is also associated with the label uh, that we're talking about today. Martin Crockett, hey, what's up? Let's go. I agree. Of course, we are broadcasting on 343 TV, brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School. Uh, great place to uh, learn whatever you need to know about music production. And uh, I do a synthesis and sound design course. Some of you might know uh, I'm actually starting one up in June on Sunday afternoons online. Check us out. Uh, if you like, we got links down below. Uh, all the information you could need about all the courses we offer uh, online and in person in New York City and in Berlin, where we have a really great location, a Riverside studio. And um, let's see, what else is going on lately? Uh, check out our Discord server. We're, we're, doing a, we're trying to hype this up this week. We're doing a, a sample challenge. And if you want to get in on that, download the sample, make a track with that and submit it. Um, we're going to you know, collect all the submissions, do a little bit of judging. We're going to go over everything live, actually, I believe on June 1st. So you've got just short of two weeks. I don't know what the ex exact deadline is, but you can find all that info uh, as well. Look out for links in the chat and uh, on our website. And uh, look he here. Who is here? Serotonin Records just came to say hi. Big ups, Andy. But I have to leave and catch the Archival Archive. Archive. Peace and don't stop the rock. I'm, <laughs> you know what? We just got to get into this. I feel like my whole flow got interrupted because of the problem with the, uh, the intro. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, bring... Our guest in and he can be out here on the on the live high wire act with me so are you ready andy let's I'm go <laughs> hey how this, you doing I'm, i could have been doing better <laughs> we were all set to go and then right at the last minute it was just i've been i've had some pretty oh. good you know streams lately everything ran smooth no technical problems i don't know if you saw when i had uh Keith Tenniswood on like the first time everything just d fell apart and we had to stop. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at oh, least well, we're doing better than that. Oh, so, absolutely. You know, no, this was. I'll, I'll take that. All it did was like you know <laughs> normally there's a little intro. It runs for a few minutes. There's some background music, you know, and then I come mm -hmm. on and do the introduction. So that's all. It, no big deal. And I'm sure our, our regular viewers are understanding. That's Let's cool, see man. who else is in, who's joining us today. We've got uh, some familiar names Who've here. We well, of course. Uh, 343 Labs is in here. That would be Thomas. Pavel, he's back. Hey, nice to see you. And I think you know this guy. Carl Finlow is in the chat. Name's familiar. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, just yeah. a little bit, right? He, he, he's got a promising future in music, I think. Exactly. And uh, right. you know, he's a really talented <laughs> chap. <laughs> sure is, man. We've got he Simple sure Sam back. Max Wild, who's uh, our leader at 343 Labs, is here. And, hey, uh, Max. It's French dinner time, according to Carl. So he, he may not be in here very long. He's probably going to have to go sit down with his family. But um, thanks for coming in. Hey, good to see you guys. Yeah. Nice. Was that Jason saying hi? That's right. I didn't understand what he said, but I'll take, I'll take the hi anyway. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't relay it very well. But yeah, he's, uh, he's just popping in to say hey to you and then going on his merry way. Live cool. Society's Shout out here. to BPMF. Exactly. Yeah, you know that, uh, Jason and I, BPMF is his artist name. He and I have been doing serotonin records for a long time, and that's kind of where we mm -hmm. got into the electro world, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, cool. yeah, we still do that every Good now stuff. and then, but we're not here to talk so much about my electro history. We're here to talk about what you do as, um, you know, you, have, yeah. you, you, you do a, a <laughs> podcast, or actually it's a mm -hmm. radio show you've been doing for how many years? Uh, nine years. Jeez. 2012 that's, we started that's great and then that mm. you know you've been doing that for a long time um you've had you you do you know you bring in guests you have mixes you do interviews and um and that yeah that's kind of what inspired you the work you were doing with that is what inspired you to start your label i think yeah yeah absolutely i mean i had no intention of starting a label when i started the show um but after the first year the, when i first started the show it was a weekly thing so I was building up quite a list of, of guests that I'd had on, and I thought it'd be cool to do a, a release that kind of showcases the people that had been on the show uh, up until that point. So the plan was to just do a one-off release, really. Um, and I'm sitting here now, I think we've done 110. So as you can see, I got a bit hooked on it. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing project. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, it came out good, man. It's uh, it, it was a CD. I don't know if you can see that. 
Yeah, hold it a little closer. How's that? Whoop. Base Agenda, Volume 1, The Fight Against the Mundane. That's it. So, yeah, that was uh, that was fun, man. But, uh, yeah, and that really kick-started things. Very nice. So, actually, I'm going to start playing some music while we're talking just to kind of make things cool. nice and interesting and have something to focus on. And I believe this first track, is that from this CD you just showed us? Yeah, it is, yeah. So this is Mikroslav, a Croatian guy. The track's called Kolm, which I still think after nearly 10 years I'm pronouncing wrong, but... Kolm. But it's a great track. It's a great track. See, I, I, every time I hear this track, it still stimulates, you know? Uh, yeah, really could, nice you track. You could always so say just, the, the English version of the uh, uh, Cologne. It's, it's the city, well, right? It's... it's I'm not sure. It's it's it might be. I think it is. Cologne yeah, is yeah. like the German way to say Cologne. But it, this is it's K O L N. Yeah, with the umlaut. Is that, is that German with the umlaut? Yeah, that yeah. is. So it would be Cologne. Yeah. Well, there you go. You've just taught me something about my first release. I didn't know. <laughs> but it's yeah, never it's, too old to learn. it's a really. That's it, man. That's that's the truth. But yeah, it's a beautiful track. Really nice vibes on it. Yeah, I had to admit, you know, I, I know a lot of your releases, but I hadn't gone all the way back to the very beginning, and this one had escaped me. It's really mm. nice. Yeah, and it was a really diverse release. I mean, we had all kinds of... We had, like, uh, Dirk Dadavo from the Neon Judgment was on there, uh, the Exaltics. It just, showed, it just really showed the huge range of music that's, that, that gets called electro, you know? Yeah, it's and, interesting. Uh, I That's one thing I cool. like about Bass Agenda as a label is that... You know, all right, it's not strictly electro. You do techno releases as well. And it isn't yeah. one dimensional in the slightest. It's really showcasing like all the different facets that, ele yeah, you know, yeah. electro, just like techno, like there's so many ways to interpret it. Yeah, for sure, man. And it's, um, you know, I love, I love all kinds of music. And it, for me, I couldn't, I couldn't do bass agenda for as long as I have done if I was releasing the same kind of electro. Or if my show was involved with interviewing people who make the same kind of electro, it, I really like that exploration. You know, you go somebody who makes really mellow stuff to somebody who makes, you know, borderline industrial stuff. I just think that keeps things interesting, you know. Right, exactly. The only downside is people can't predict what you're going to do, so I'm like that, some don't. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Like, it's. I think we were talking about this this week where labels mm. that sort of are more consistent with a particular style and a sound and that are you can anticipate what they're going to do kind of yeah. it's it, it's a little easier to sell that it's a little easier to do bigger numbers and to reach <clears throat> people when you maintain that kind of consistency but also yeah, yeah. if you love lots of different kinds of music that can be a big limitation and it's it is a challenge though to to be eclectic and to change your style and it is, man. Some yeah. labels can do I mean, it. I think, but it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Some do. I mean, some do. I, 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 I mean, I, you know, I, I guess I've done quite well. I'm, I mean, I'm never happy. <laughs> I'm a bit of a perfectionist. But um, I think commercially, being as diverse as Base Agenda has been, you know, has been has been hard work. You know, so right. the, the the idea that you can you can make money is uh, it's just a myth, man. But but yeah, I mean, I, I think those labels that are fairly narrow, and I mean that with the greatest respect as well. But those labels who are predictable in, in some sense are probably the most commercially successful and you know that's cool we need we need a mixture of stuff out there definitely so i knew this was going to happen oh, yeah. so i saw alex was in here he sent me a message on facebook the other day about the the music levels and how he couldn't hear carl and i talk guess what alex i hear you and you've got some experience with radio, <laughs> so I'm going to trust you. If you think I need to turn the music down, I'll turn the music down. But you know what? I set up like side chain ducking so that this wouldn't happen today, I guess. I don't know. It just sounds different going out over the internet after it's compressed, maybe. That's what it is. But Alavux yeah, thanks is for the music. The music's geek. Music what? geek's music geek. You know, he's on another level. So. Oh, absolutely. I trust him. I trust him with Ab whatever he says. Absolutely. So yeah, <laughs> you just give us the thumbs up or the thumbs down <laughs> if we're doing all right. And, um, Quality control. Speaking of geeks, I mean, it, I would say a lot of people who are into electro tend towards nerdiness. Would you Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, yeah, I would <laughs> say so. I would say so. Some Some are more open about it than others, but sure. We, yeah, we, you know, you've got to have you got to have some of that in your DNA. I think you might have a cool, mysterious, artistic persona, but then you know, when you're when you're at home with your mates, you're nerding out about FM synthesizers or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it. 
This is it. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I'm not, I've never really got sucked into is the technical side of it. I've always come at this from a fan point of view. Right. So I do get lost quite quickly when people start talking about, uh, you know, the technical side. Well, I kind of envy that but, a little uh, bit, man. like, because after years of making music, you know, producing and DJing and in pure enjoyment of music is, it becomes a bit elusive. Like sometimes I'm, I, I when I yeah. listen to music, I'm always analyzing it. Right. Like, is this working or not? You know, it, it, it's it's hard to just remember sometimes just to be a fan, just a listener and just enjoying yeah, yeah. the moment. And I find it's easier Definitely, to do with man. music that I don't make myself or styles of music that don't come naturally to me. I'm like, I can just kind of let it mm. wash over me and feel it and maybe not break it down yeah, as much. Yeah. So. I've had those experience. I've like I've listened to a track. I said, "This is tra- this track's amazing," and somebody says, "Yeah, but the snare could be a bit crisper," you know. <laughs> and it's like I guess if, you know, if you're, you're missing, running a label, you're missing the feeling. You do have to be a little bit critical because you need to maintain a level of quality. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got. I'm that. checking out the chat again. <laughs> Alavux says we're okay now. He, like we're good. So thanks. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We've, you, we've got the Alavux seal of approval. Maybe I can hire him to be my remote audio engineer for next time. Hey man, that's your call. That's my call. <laughs> so I'm seeing. I'll let a, you guys negotiate the salary. I'm seeing a lot of new names in the chat. This is good. You're bringing in people. Oh yeah. Yeah, you've you've got fans. For sure, wow. you know. For sure, base agenda is like, you know. I've said this to people. I've you know I've called you a pillar of the underground, and I think people have a lot of respect for your label and what you're doing with it. So uh, mm, that's cool. That's me Thank being you. a no, fanboy. I'm, I'm glad people. Because like I've never yeah, been man, able no, to. You know you've. You've been good. You've you've been very kind with your feedback over the years, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And then, no, like, I, I, you know, Jason and I have run Serotonin on and off for years, but we never really, like, we had a couple of big records, but we never hit a, a, our stride. It was always sort of starting and stopping and kind of doing it on the side yeah, yeah. and not really, you know, have, being, having a focused sort of plan. So I always felt mm. like you kind of had that, like you had a, a bigger vision and a goal to take the label in towards. I think... <laughs> Yeah, kind of. I've always had that since I started Base Agenda. It's always been about the community side of it and connecting people and, you know, the, the, the way the music does that. And that's why I'm really keen to sort of, with the label and the show, is, is is to sort of highlight, you know, a guy who's just released his first EP and then, you know, the Egyptian lover or, you know, so just to get that whole spectrum. So I like that. That's always driven. I wouldn't say I've had a plan as far as releases has gone. It's almost been kind of just happy accidents one after the other but what i think i got fairly good at is is kind of the the, the process if you like of, of once i got a release i can i can get it out there and promote it but i mean i've done nearly all of it myself yeah. really in terms of in terms of artwork and everything no but, you're, you're, uh, as, I, as i said to you the other day that's why i feel burnt out at the moment i think <laughs> but it's been a happy ride man for sure that's fantastic um <laughs> carl finlow says base agenda is like the united nations of electro nice Wow, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I need to get a flag made up. I'll get a flag outside Base Agenda Towers. There it is. Second oh. technical issue of today. I had to reload the 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 chat so that it, I could make it show up on the screen. But I had to share oh, yeah? this one with everybody. I want everybody to see that this is really what he said. Thanks, Carl. I really appreciate that, man. Nice. One Let- day, me and Carl might actually meet face to face. Have you never met? I mean, I just only met him virtually no, myself. Man. No, we've chatted for a long time. I've released a couple of things. Well, by, he's only by over Carl the channel. Years. I guess once you guys are, once we're all traveling around more again, you guys uh, should do yeah, that. We, let's not get into Brexit and the pandemic now, man. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, no politics. <laughs> no politics. Let's check out another but song. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, do, man. This is, uh, now you, you pronounce this one for me. Yeah, yeah. This one confuses people, unfortunately. Hit the, the artist's name is Bebo. Uh-huh. Uh, Bebo. But it's spelled w, W1B0. This track is uh, Utopia Planitia, which is probably, I mean, it pretty much is the, probably the, the biggest track that's been out on the label, really. This has been, Stingray's played it, Juan Atkins has played it, Helena Half's played it, and it's one that's still, so, you know, I still see people picking up on it and posting it, and, you know, it's got, it's really hit home, this one. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and, it, you know, it's uh, it, Bebo's very good at this sort of, building things up to a crescendo. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Yeah, don't don't worry, Alavux, we'll turn it back down again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm giving him a hard time. I apologize. I appreciate the help. 
And the Bucks knows this tune, he'll appreciate it on the highest volume. Yeah, so Vibo's a Dutch producer. I was actually the first person to buy his music. Really? Um, I heard a track of his on Dave Clark's White Noise years ago. And I managed to track him down on Twitter and said, I really want that track, where do I buy it? And he said, well, it's not for sale really, but I'll send it. I think he sold it to me for a euro or something. Uh, oh, nice, that's a good deal. So, uh, yeah, and we kind of struck up a friendship from there. And so, yeah, this is on, uh, this is part of a series called Transhumanism, which is basically four Dutch guys, very different styles. Oh, yeah, I've seen some of them. One I'm pretty sure I've grabbed some, some of their stuff from you when you sent out promos. They're very good. Yeah, so that. I don't know if you can, you won't be able to read that. Probably. I should have, I should have set up slides ahead of time so I could show. That's everybody. all right, man. I only, I literally, <laughs> I literally got all these together about five minutes before we spoke. I should have thought about it earlier. On. But yeah, this is, this is a great track, man. And um, he's, he's, you know, going from strength to strength. This is definitely, you know, hard hitting, like big room kind of stuff. Like this would sound yeah. amazing on a huge system. It does. And it's not, sometimes, <laughs> it really does. it's funny, sometimes electro can be so intricate and so many layers and so many different things going on. Um, yeah. And that stuff, I guess, you know, that would work better in like a, in a, in a listening environment or a smaller venue. But mm -hmm. I feel, and it, it makes sense yeah, yeah. that, you know, you're banging it out more. It's it's a little more simple, but it's really powerful. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Now, Bebo's an important guy. I mean, he's a friend, but you know, he, he was the first vinyl release was him on Bass Agenda. Um, you know, we did some, we put the lineup together for what a couple of Dave Clark's uh, Whippet shows in Holland. Right. Bebo DJ'd on that. Nice. So it's really been nice to see him go from you know that guy who was selling his music to one bloke for a euro to uh, you know somebody who's doing good, man. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think you've definitely had an ear for that and what you said earlier about you know having a new artist as a guest on the on the show and then introducing them to the world and then releasing their music and then that's being like a trajectory the beginning of their trajectory towards like kind of blowing up a little bit and that's yeah. that's important to, to to be able to do that is really valuable not everybody has an ear for that so i, I guess you've got a and r skills you can identify what it is that, that is going to work. Apparently so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't always get it right, man. But we've done, no, we've done, we've done pretty well. I think. I think most people have benefited. I hope from the experience, if yeah, you like. I think so. so. But the thing about the the, um, the lesser known artists and the big. I mean, whenever they, we were talking earlier about Electro having yet another resurgence, and I think a lot of the press tend to focus on a very small number of artists yeah. every time they talk about Electro, and it just doesn't represent. The scene, you know. I mean, I love I love DJ Stingray. I love Helena Howe. I love Sync Twenty Four. I love Carl Finlow. You know, there are a lot more people out there, and they just don't get the exposure. So, you know, that's what we want to do. Much appreciated. You know, there's so, a guy called John Selway does quite good stuff too. I mean. Yeah, I, every now and then I might come up with something if I'm lucky. I haven't been making a lot of stuff. Over, uh, I mean, I I have a couple things coming out, but. I've actually just sent a couple of tracks to, to Orson. Oh, cool. And he's Great. named his label after himself, hasn't he? Like, it's not Transparent yes, Sound yeah. anymore. It's Orson Records or something like that. It's Orson Records. Yeah, Transparent Sound is his artist name. Right. And Orson is the label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great, man. The stuff he put out, I don't know if you heard the Ben Pest. That he, he is put out wicked. That re I got that My one right God. away. <laughs> really cool. Um, you know, you hear a track, you think, fuck, I wish I'd had this on my label, man. That's a, uh, yeah, real highlight from last year. Yeah, Orson asked me, yeah. he likes the two tracks I sent them, but he wants another one with a vocoder on it. So now okay. I'm like, all right, I got it. I have, I think, honestly, I've been avoiding it a little bit because I haven't had any, like, ideas for lyrics that I want to say. Like, with, it's so easy to be cliche with lyrics for electro. And yeah. I really don't want to do that. I gotta. Tr it's if if I don't if it doesn't jump out at me, it's kind of a fresh idea. I I'm hesitant. Maybe I'm overthinking. You need it. some. Uh, maybe you and me should do some DJ Godfather ghetto type vocals. What do you reckon? There you go. You can just record some stuff, send it to me. I'll put a vocal yeah. on. Yeah, man. No worries. Get, I mean, you, get you on a record. Don't rush into it just because we're live, man. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Well, we can talk about it. No. No. No pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just just planting the seed, man. 
Totten Tons. What a name. Totten Tons 137 says this tune is rippage. I would agree. He knows his stuff. He knows or his she. stuff. Yeah, you never know. Cool. Good, good. What would you say for... All right, we're talking about A&R and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have this label that's widely respected in this community of people who are making electro or playing electro. And it's very diverse, but also it's still like you're not too diverse it's not too eclectic where you're going off the uh, you know like you're going off of the the scale it's still you know it's electro with some techno and it has kind of a vibe you do have a lot of strong dark releases mixed in with some nice musical releases um let's say you're new to this you're trying to make music and get it released and you're trying to decide like what should i do with this what are you what would you as a label be looking for from a new artist what advice any kind of that you might give someone because all right nowadays we also have the option of just self publishing everything you can get a disc yeah, yeah. kid or whatever and just just throw it out there is that mm. a good idea you know to be self published or does it make sense to like approach someone like you and if if you did approach someone like you what are you looking for wow there's a lot there man um i mean i would say for me I look for, I mean, for me, I th- what I've learned over time, I suppose, is is that I I, I think because of, because this, you know, nobody's going to get rich doing this, um, and because of that, you've got to do, you've got to enjoy it. So you want to work with people that you can work with. So you know, the music is is a huge part of it, but the, the artists that I've worked with the longest and where the relationships done the best has been has been also there's that chemistry between people. So I think you've got to you, you've got to it's, there's nothing wrong with you as a label, at, you know, judging people by by that as well as the music. Because I mean, you can release the banger by somebody who's an absolute pain to work with, and it, you know, it, it's, it doesn't work. It's short lived, and so I think I, I I always look for that. I mean, when we did, I mean, I know we'll get onto this, I guess, but when we did Carebots, you know, the people who approached me that I hadn't heard of that got on the release were people who, you know, I I felt that you know that there's a good attitude there, mm-hmm. good kind of values about what the underground's about, and so on. I mean, musically, it's a really hard thing to put in words, isn't it? Because I think, I mean, I've re- everything I've released, I like. You know, there's no, there's no, that's, that's got to be the first test. Um, I think what I do like is when a when an artist approaches me, they've already got some idea of what who they are as an artist and what they want to achieve. Um, you know, I've had people say, "Oh, look, I've got this folder of fifty tracks. Uh, you know, can you go through them and let me know what you want to do?" And I'm like, "Well." No, <laughs> for one, I don't have the time. Right, but also, you know, you either get fifty tracks that are all very, very much the same and, and rather boring, or you get you get tracks that are so all over the place it's hard to work out who this person is. So I do like a bit of cohesion if somebody's approaching me with multiple tracks. Right. Um, I mean, nobody's going to. I'm not saying it's got to be perfect, but you need to have some. You need to have some clue about what you know who you are, what you want to be. And I think for me, what I look for, and this is the hardest thing to find, but what I try and find is people who are doing something a bit different. I mean, I've had people approach me and say, oh, I've, I've just made these two tracks. They sound exactly like Drexia. And I'm like, well, what what, what have you done that for? <laughs> it's been done. Yeah. It has been you know. done and it's been done a lot. I mean, on the one a hand, lot. it's so important and influential, you know, so unique that, you know, Drexia is such a huge influence on modern electro, right? It's hard to avoid oh, in a way. But yeah, at yeah, the same totally. time, like, do we need another like aquatic themed uh, electro project? Well, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even, it, but even even sound wise, I mean, this sure. is why. I mean, I think the next the next track up is Dynarec. Mm. That he's a he's a good guy because he he he's explained to me that his music is a, is about it's inspired by Drexia. Sure, and you can hear but it, but it's rather than yeah but rather than repeating it or trying to copy it he's trying to evolve it so it's like the next stage of that right. that sound that that experiment and i like you know i like that and dynarex amazing i mean i mean all his stuff's incredible this song is i need to get this out on vinyl at some time because it wasn't on vinyl it's uh yeah this is another one that i missed this one's a song i i, I uh, do like dynarex a yeah. lot and this is no exception mm. yeah he's got some new stuff coming out soon uh, i forget what label but yeah, he's an amazing guy, and I love this song because it's. I mean, I call it a song rather than a track because the structure's got. There's a definite song-like structure to it, the way it evolves, and but uh, it's a tune. Yeah, 
It's the tune. <laughs> That's something about electro that I really like as well. Being a, a musician who started, you know, playing the violin and the piano and learning traditional music theory and arranging and composition. Yeah, yeah. But then having to like forget a lot of it to make techno and be experimental. But anyway, right. I still like a good melody. And electro is a genre where you can reach out and be interesting with melody and harmony and arranging and still kind of have this it's still electro yeah, yeah. you're not it's not like going in a cheesy direction necessarily there's a little more leeway with being musical in electro than there is i feel like with techno once you get too musical I, with techno it yeah, becomes yeah. another genre sometimes yeah I, I th yeah you got a good that's a good point man i think and i think the, the you know the electro audience not not all but i would say the majority of the electro audience are very open-minded sure and they're really and they're really excited to see somebody try something different you know i mean i was having a chat with uh, a guy a guest on my last show a guy called rau and he was saying about you know underground resistance they have these incredible beats and bass lines and then you'd have like an accordion or a saxophone right and it would just be you know that that's that's really cool not you know, everybody can get away really. with saxophones and techno but they can no no no, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> or, but you uh, know, with the, the, you get there's much more room for creativity. I think with with electro, and that's why it's you know I never get bored with it, man. It's always something new. I was just thinking about saxophones, and I, the, the, the guy that does three four three labs, Max Wild, plays the saxophone. And this is a terrible segue, oh, yeah? but yes, yeah, speaking just to remind everybody about our sample challenge. Max Wilde, I believe, recorded <laughs> the saxophone for the sample challenge. So maybe some of you guys out there making electro and techno can are, are up to see if you can make something cool in your style yeah, yeah. with a saxophone. You have the opportunity. Just go to our Discord channel, you, uh, and you can find out the information there and uh, grab the samples and sign up and everything. So we're, we're almost halfway through. And, wow. uh you know, just to acknowledge the chat again, I'm really happy today. We've got a lot of new names of the chat. Welcome to everybody who hasn't been in, in here before. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, maybe you subscribe, but you didn't. You don't get notifications. Hit the notifications. It really helps us out a lot. And you know, this all these are all the things that you got to do when you're on YouTube. You got to subscribe. You got to get notifications. Give us a reaction. I've done my bit. Thanks. And uh, of course. Remember to uh, check out 343labs.com, 343labs.de if you're interested in the programs that we're running, music production with Ableton Live, Logic, songwriting, um, audio uh, mixing and mastering. Abe Duque actually does a really great uh, mixing and mastering class. I do synthesis and sound design. Uh, from the perspective of, from a creative perspective, as much as a technical perspective, kind of like uh, getting to know the different types of synthesis and sound design techniques and, you know, being able to make better choices as a producer, as a composer, uh, and, and, you know, whether you make all your own sounds or whether you still use presets, you know what to do with them more easily because you have a, a grasp on how it all works. So check that out if you're interested. Let's get back into the conversation with Andy. Lauren mm -hmm. Alavux saying uh, electro sax. Yeah, it's probably been done. Do oh, it's definitely been done. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's like electro with saxophones. There must be some. Break, what's that one? Breaking in space. All right, like really early kind of breakdance era stuff. That's got to be one it was. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. more that's, likely that's, to have happened. And you go oh, back yeah, far enough, gonna, it's like uh, electro funk. And then, you know, once you're making funk music, yeah. that opens up the door to all sorts of brass instruments. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but now I like I like that. You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I mean, you do get sent some strange. I think I told you the other day I got sent. Somebody sent me a dubstep remix which features Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> and um, I want to hear it. <laughs> man, I want to hear I how, how off the it's, wall it's, it is. It's like Ozzy Osbourne and two different hip hop artists, and he's done a mashup and seemed to think it would be really good for the label. So okay, yeah, well, I don't I'm, know. I must you... skip. I must skip. I'll get back to that. Man. <laughs> you, you may. You may. You might. Um, yeah, I don't I mean, know. I like You'd Ozzy think it's amazing how many people send promos to labels and they don't. They, it's obvious they've never listened to what the label releases because you never would know. Oh. So that's yeah. that's no, definitely crazy. good advice for anybody getting started. Is just don't just randomly send your stuff out to everyone. Like look for people yeah, yeah. that are doing what you're really interested in and will be more accepting and more understanding of mm. who you are and where you're coming from. 
And I liked what you said 100%. earlier about just being able to understand and get along with someone and be friendly with someone. Like there's got to be a vibe. You don't want to be having, you know, labels on your artists that you can't, you don't even want to talk to, right? It's, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty rare, but I think, you know, there's got to be some chemistry and there's got to be some, you know, people who are realistic about what, what's going to happen, you know. I mean, you know, as you know, these days, if you sell out 300 records, you know, you, you, you've had a, you, that's pretty good going, right. you know. If you sell a thousand, that's, that's, you know, amazing. amazing. Whereas you go, you go back to the old days when a limited edition was like 15,000 records, you know. So it's, it's just about, you know, as I say, chemistry is a huge part of it for me. I think it's all, it is, a, I mean, I know it's all about machines and everything, but people are, it's still, you still got to get on with the person behind it all as well. Exactly. Let's sure. check, let's check out another track. This is Cetrus. Yeah. Yeah, this is a new, fairly new guy. This, this was a debut for him. This is off of, um, I start, I start, in fact, the first release I did after the, uh, the compilation that launched the label was something called Base Agenda Presents. Mm -hmm. And that's a series of VPs, which is basically focused on new artists, debuts, maybe established artists, but they're, you know, they're launching a new project, that kind of thing. So yeah, this, this guy, this was his first release. I even, I think I even went through SoundCloud and just started approaching a few people who had like, you know, all followers or something, but I really liked the track. So yeah, I've done the 17, 18 of those now. Nice. So you've, yeah, been pretty good, good. you've been pretty good and consistent with these kind of you, you'll it, there's the label but then you'll have these kind of sub series within the label series that focus on a specific kind of direction that's interesting yeah i think it just kind of helps me I mean, I mean whether it helps listeners or not i'm not sure i hope it does which just kind of helps me kind of partition the work do you know what i mean sure yeah that's but yeah I, this is a good that, track i feel like that's more more organized than I've ever been about running a label. <laughs> I mean, we did, we tried. I mean, we've done, we, we, one thing we've been consistent about is, and one of the things I like is uh, doing EPs with multiple artists that are kind of showcasing the, the, the sort of various styles that we're interested in on the label. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it also, to be honest, it's easier to, you know, getting four good tracks out of one artist is harder than four artists with one track each. Right, you can get one yeah, good track yeah. out of four artists, and that's a good EP. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's true, man. I mean, those EPs you guys did not that long ago. A Whenever years, I interviewed yeah. you, I think it was four years ago. You know, with was it TCMF and Pride right. Saber Tooth and right. you know those those are great records, man. Yeah, and all all together, those tracks sort of added up to like the serotonin sound, whatever that is. Mm. Yeah, which has always yeah, been no, I get you. a little weird. It's like. The electro that we put out is it's not definitely not Drexia copies. It's like always a little bit of, off the edge of the of the chart in a way, kind of on purpose. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's hard to define really, but in a, in a, in a good way. <laughs> You've got that funk. The funk's definitely in there. Some of those bass lines, man. Absolutely, that is also paramount. We have to have some element of, of especially in the bass lines. There's got to be some kind of funk feel. Actually, this track playing right now has that. Bug, yeah, Bug yeah, Tank. He's, yeah, he's got the, One of the he's people the in the chat is Bug Tank. That's a perfect name uh, for this kind of sound. Uh, this is fun to dance to. I agree. Popping in my chair. Cool. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. If people want to check out some of this stuff for free, by the way, I should have oh, told yeah. you this. Yeah. On Bandcamp. Whatever it is. What is it? Bandcamp.com slash Base Agenda Recordings, I think. Something like that. You'll work it out. There's, there's five samplers on there called Various Objects. Part right. one, two, three, yeah, four, those five. are good. Those are good free collections. Everybody go grab yeah, them. Yeah, right I mean, now. it's not it's not a case of picking out, you know, what, what are the worst tracks on the label? Let's put them out for free. You know, it's um, there's some really good stuff there. So, uh, yeah, go for it. Donations of $100 or more are welcome, of course. I'll go straight to the artist. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. It'll go to Alibux. Yeah, he's he's earned it. He's, he's earned it. <laughs> Just technical support. That's his fee. Yeah, no, I love this. This is a great EP. And he, this guy's got something coming out soon on vinyl. On, on Base uh, Agenda. No, no, oh. on um, I think it's like Blind Alleys or one of those one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this was his debut, and um, yeah, just blew me away when he sent me the tracks. 
It's good. No, I, I think you might, I don't know if this is true or not. I mean, I'm trying to think, I don't know all the labels. I've kind of been out of DJing, so I haven't, I'm not following as many new labels as I used to, but you have a pretty high percentage of new artist release, releases, right? Like people coming, I'd stepping out the, the majority. First time. Yeah. The, probably the majority, yeah. I just took that, it's that same attitude about the press earlier, you know. I didn't see, I mean, I have released some big names. But I didn't. I didn't want to just dedicate my time to chasing after people who were getting releases left, right, and centre already. You know, right. Some 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 people don't need a leg up. You know, you know I, I get more satisfaction out of seeing somebody go from debut to you know, something else than I do about releasing something by somebody who releases three EPs a year. You know. So that's why I'm so broke. Oh, <laughs> it does. It does cost to run a business like this. It's not a, it's not all gravy. You got to do it because you love it. And that's definitely something I can tell about your label is that you're doing this because you love the music. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's just the. I mean, the, the, to me, I mean, we've talked before about what is underground, and I think underground is that it's partly through necessity of having the commercial side almost stripped away from you, mm. but. You know, it, it, you people say, "Oh, I'm doing it." You know, I'm doing this for the music, and you can tell the people who really are doing it for the music. You know, definitely. Um, I think. I I agree. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I just I was just thinking about the three four three business. I don't believe I mentioned our giveaway this week. Um, we have Isotopes uh, Vocal Synth Two as our giveaway and there should have been a link in the chat here i don't know if i missed it if it was in there early on but of course 343 labs can throw that link into the chat um i, I want to mention it now before it gets too much later because this is this is your last chance to enter for the giveaway you just need to go to a link and give us your email address and then you'll be signed up to win this great really cool vocal processing plugin vocal uh, vocal synth and um We'll be uh, announcing the winner very shortly before the end of the show. So, and cool. uh, yeah, thanks to Bug Tank. It was great to have you. He he was a student in the class in the synth course. So thanks a lot for those kind words. Uh, nice. Let's keep moving along and put on some more music. We've got plenty to listen to, and hopefully to talk about. <laughs> this is uh, the subdermic. This is uh, not electro. Right, and I know you have a series of releases think, that are more focused on techno. Is this one of those? Yeah, yeah. So this was, um, yeah. So this is part of something called the Base Agenda T series, which is a T for techno, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, again, as I said to you before, I just, I just like a lot of music. And Subdermic's an artist I've loved for a long time. She's brilliant. And I mean, this kick drum says it all really i mean just i mean you can i generally have headbang to this song <laughs> it's really good and she sent me this and a couple of other bits and i was like i basically started the basic agenda t series because she was looking for an outlet to get this out and we'd we'd done a bit of electro so this really launched it and uh yeah it's uh, incredible on a sister big system as well it really does that does do some damage that's a pretty turn heavy kick drum. Turn it up, drown me out, man. That's turn, what I'm doing, turn, turn, up, turn it up, because we want to hear this one banging <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it's great. I like it, it's like kind of, it's brutal, and you know, it's got that distorted 909 f uh, flavor, but it's also really yeah. clean and sharp, and Very. really well mixed. Like, I know this is going to sound amazing on a large system. Yeah, yeah. She really puts the hours into... She, you know, I mean, I don't know whether she'd call herself a perfectionist, but she really does take time. Uh, you know, she might not release a lot, but when she does, you can tell she's really put some love into it. It's good stuff. Simple Sam here says we could have called it the A, assuming for Acid series with this track. Yeah, it's definitely got a nice kind of yeah, yeah. twisted acid well, thing maybe going that, on. Maybe that's maybe that'll be next. Well, this is a pair. I'm reading the title here: Scaring Horses Acid House Mix. Yeah, I think if yeah. you played this loud enough, it would definitely bother a horse. <laughs> oh, for sure. That's how we tested the um, the master out. <laughs> you knew it was right the when, the, when the horse bolted. Yeah, that's it. Very funny. William Mindreaders is here, is a regular of ours. He says, know the label and what they are looking for, but don't do stuff for the label. 
That makes sense. Like, and you were saying earlier, okay. you should do it, do what you do because it's what you're passionate about. And I think if it's good yeah. and it's what the label's looking for, they're going to respond to that for sure. Yeah. You can tell when you hear the music right away if it's sort of phoned in or if it's made with some kind of passion. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's right. difficult these days. I mean, you know, when you're doing all this as we are, mostly online, you, you know, you really, you really have to. You know, you have to go. You have to feel your way to some extent. We have yes, a question a from Snelton. Whoa. Question uh -oh. for both of us. Let's see. How do you handle incoming unwanted demos? Do you try to always reply politely, or sometimes just keep stuff unanswered when it's not fitting the label at all? Yeah, I try. This is this is Robert Selton Snelton, aka. Slaves of Sinus, uh -huh. who's one of the transhumanism guys. So you know this another, guy. All right, nice. Another fantastic. See, I know him, so we can just ignore the question. <laughs> you don't want to answer. <laughs> is he, is no, no, he no, it's a good is, question. Is he trolling you? Is that what's happening here? No, he's, he's good, man. He's good. Yeah, I mean, I try and respond to... I think if somebody's approached me and they're, they're coming at it with, from a respect... I mean, I get, you know, you get people who just send you a link. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not even going to open the link. If somebody sends you a message and says, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm really interested in your label, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, we'll have a listen to them. And if people have made that effort and it's in the right kind of field, and for whatever reason I can't do it, whether it's because the schedule's too full or the money's not there, or, then I will reply and just say, look, you know, I wish you luck. But, you know, if I, you, and I'm, I'm hoping I manage to do that almost every time. But yeah, people who come in with just a link, or have just clearly not researched or got any clue about the label. Mm -hmm. I tend to, unless I'm feeling incredibly generous, I right. tend to just let those let those pass by. I'm afraid. Yeah, that makes so, sense. And and again, it, you know, com it comes down to only so many to, hours in the day, man. <laughs> well, right. And you, you know, if you have a good label, you're going to get a lot of demos. Um, and but it, that ties in perfectly with you know how how you get along with someone and how someone sort of the vibe you get from them from the beginning like first impressions count a lot so you yeah. know if you approach a label with some kind of you know attitude or it's just cold or there's nothing interesting that you're saying or then why would anybody kind of pay attention right you you want to be kind of it's a strange it's a strange i mean i've spent my, my my day job for years has been kind of sales and marketing stuff so i, I mean i've obviously i guess got a bit of maybe a bit more understanding than than some people might do i don't know but i i do think pe people and art new artists in particular really need to give some thought to how they're how they're presenting them so it doesn't matter how great your track is you know you you th th there's more to it there's more yards to run than just making a good track definitely because there's because there, there's so many people doing it now it's very competitive. I can't imagine, like, starting now as a new artist. I mean, on the one hand, some things are easier than ever. Like, just getting your music out there is easier than it used to be. But then, because yeah. of that, you're just lost in a sea of, just in an ocean of music that just is endless. It's so deep. And yeah, yeah. getting, and getting some why, kind um, of recognition, it's really hard. This is why I've got a soft spot for some of these tracks that we've been listening to, because these are still tracks that I hear in set, mm -hmm. you know, years on after they've been released. And I think, you know, doing my radio show, I'll, I'll fill a, I'll fill a two-hour show with great music, and then, to be honest with you, a lot of it, you, you never hear it again, really. And it's a real shame because there's so much good stuff out there. Sean Durain, somebody you know. Sure, say again. Sean Durain. Do you see that? He's asking you if you're drinking neat vodka. I think this is somebody you know who's messing with oh, you. Oh, no, no, this is gin. Gin oh, okay. and tonic, but... Gin and tonic, got it. And he, uh, very similar. And if, do you want a demo from Cyber Rain? <laughs> I don't like jazz, man. No saxophones, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Max Wild. One sorry, day. Sorry, Cyber Rain. One day, Sean. So yeah. we, we're I mean, up... Cyber Rain's great, man. He does some really good stuff. Yeah, I know. We're we'll just fooling there. around here with your friends, your artists. We'll get there. I know. I knew I was going to get trolled on this thing. No, it's you're just asking for it. When you go out in public on the on the internet and you live stream, someone's going to get clever with you or try. This is the thing. But that's all this good. It's all good natured. So far, it's all friends, yeah, yeah. I believe. There's so a lot of really nice people out there, man. It's it's a privilege to have met these guys through music. Absolutely, most of them. Most of them. All right. So 
<laughs> we're up to another track. I've got this whole, it's, I don't know if we're even going to have time to get through every track here, but we're up to an important one because it's, it's from the CareBot compilation, which was really like yeah. an amazing project you put together. So you should tell everybody about that. Um, this is um, what the track that Kit Builders did. Now, Kit Builders has been around since the 90s, really excellent artist. There's two of yeah, them, right? Yeah. There's, a, there's a duo. That's right. Yeah, They've yeah. been making really yeah, yeah. great electro tracks excellent. for many really years. Good. I'm definitely a fan as well. So had some stuff out on Adult's label, and um, God, oh, God, I've lost track, man. But yeah, they've, uh, they, I mean, they're just great. And I love, I love their their approach the vocal side i mean i like i like electro with vocals yeah um you you know sometimes and the way they do it her vocals are amazing so um yeah so carebots uh, is actually a year old today uh, strangely enough which nice john john and i obviously planned perfectly yes uh, yeah Do exactly yeah, what we were doing the whole that, time that, that's that's the whole that's why we waited so long and uh, <laughs> it was uh, yeah basically a charity release to raise money totally inspired by the, the covid pandemic um i was actually going to take a break from the label at the beginning of last year i just wanted a few months to kind of clear my head and you know take stock and everything um and i, I obviously the covid thing kicked off and i was thinking oh man it'd be really nice to do something but something i was kind of i was in two minds about it and then des williams actually approached me and said look andy you, you know you should you should be the one to do this and I was like, well, let's put some feelers out. I'll ask a few people and see if there's anything there. And I think after the first two days of sort of messaging and whatnot, we had about, we had like nearly 60 artists already, including you, I think. Right. And it, I think you were, fair, you were on fairly, fairly early on. Weren't you? I saw it right away. I mean, and I was kind of, yeah. you know, early on in the pandemic, I, I was feeling kind of discombobulated and you don't know what was going on and we're cooped up in the house and what's going on with my kids and you know sometimes yeah. you just want to do something and make something and i definitely had some feelings to get out in a track and you, you you i saw that and i'm like i want to give i wanted to give you something right away for that it was yeah just sort of well, you felt did, right man, in the it, moment that's great what, what you what you what you put in for it is great i mean for me i mean i told you this before i, I lost i lost pretty much all my work when the, when we locked down over here um and i think a lot of people were in a similar position or so i think the idea that and this wasn't my priority or the reason of, for doing it, but it turns out that it was a, a really cool byproduct was that people had a bit of purpose and sure. something to channel their energy into. And so, yeah, the, the standard, I mean, I would say this obviously, but the standard, there's 142 tracks and the standard is very high. It's amazing. You got 140, very high. that's, I mean, it, it, it's gotta be one of the biggest compilations ever. I don't know if there are, as far as different genres go different labels go like what people have done but that's a pretty, really pretty amazing big. amount of artists on a pretty single big release for electro yeah it's pretty sure. big for electro i did i did a charity release for cancer charity with a guy called martin bolton in mm. 2016. he runs touched music i don't know if you've come across rings about i think his last compilation had something like 400 tracks okay so and, yeah that's know. really big <laughs> so he set the bar he set the bar pretty high man but yeah i mean the main thing with this one is i think you know it's got it's got that cross section of you know you've got anthony rotor on there people like yourself and then there's guys on there there's a couple of debuts on there um it gave people a real buzz to be involved it gave me something to do for t three months you know, right. almost solid <laughs> And, and it's, it's raised nearly 10 grand. Right. I was going to say it's been really successful and your, your goals so, have been exceeded, you know, multiple times. I think I wouldn't, I wasn't expect, I mean, I, I was the, I was the person, the woman I was dating at the time and she said, Oh, well, how much do you think you'll raise? And I said, well, I'll be happy if we raise two grand. Mm. I think that's probably a good going. And I think we got past that within the first sort of two or three weeks. And I was fast. like, wow, this is, this is crazy. But yeah, I looked at my Bandcamp sales report recently and I think some, some, over 700 people have bought it on there. Um, and you know it's on other platforms as well. So if you haven't bought it, people, go out and get it. It's so worth yeah. it. What, what what the hell's wrong with you? It's it's Good kind of like that. a state of electro at that time, and like 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 you're saying, like the quality across the board on that. Um, speaking of everyone else, not myself. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's, some, it's people, some people are some people are carrying other people, but you know. You're... <laughs> 
No man, it's it's great. It's, it's great, I and mean, it's it's still a good listen. But this track, Kit Builders, is one of my favourites. This is one Dave Clark picked this one up quite quick. He, he supported Carebots quite heavily, and this was one of his uh, go-to tracks. I'm turning it up a little bit just in case you're go. There's I'm hearing a little part in here. It's they get a, they get they're musical. They get into some like unusual melodies and things like that. Sometimes I like what Kit Builders does a lot, and then also yeah, incorporating mm. vocals in a way. With electro, it, it's it's easy to be cliche, but I they definitely what she does fits right in, and it's got a little bit of kind of a minimal synth, you know, kind of yeah, eighties vibe to it as well. Wave wave feels it, yeah, sort I of mean, it's it's just a, similar to like what Adult mixture. does a little bit. Yeah, 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 perfect mixture of elements, I think, you know. And I think you know they're influenced by a lot of different stuff. I think when I when I interviewed them for the show, they chose like Mantronics was one of their influences. Interesting, you know, and you know, just really a real melting pot, it just, and it's really paid off. I think electro as a genre is a melting pot. It's a lot of different people yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in a lot of variation, and uh, definitely, I always come back to it. I mean, I, you know, I, I we were uh, we were talking earlier about sort of I, I was admitting that there was a period of time where I kind of tuned out of the electro scene for a little while. And I've actually, I've tried to catch up on some of the stuff that I missed. But I, even if, even yeah. if I kind of, if my attentions wander stylistically, I always come back to it. It's always like a really important yeah. part of my kind of musical development. Mm. There's just so much, in, and there's so, you know, there's a, there's something for every mood, really. Sure. You know, that that that's the amazing thing. Yeah, it never gets dull. Let's see who's in the chat. A couple of my regulars are having fun goofing around with some stuff we were playing with yesterday, and I covered Abe Decay's stream. And I had the uh, cool. They're they're we we're putting effects processing on Abe's voice, and they're like, okay. I don't know what they're doing. They're talking about that, but uh, let's see. Kim Cosmic is in the chat. Hey, that's another artist that we like. We do like Kim Cosmic. Definitely welcome. Very Glad cool. to see you here. Somebody else I need to interview at some point. Don't sure. Go anywhere. I'm, I would, I'd love to. I need to catch up on some of your episodes. We should talk a little bit more about the, the the podcast. Do you call it a podcast or a radio show? I call it a radio show, but I mean, you, could, you know, it, it, I, can, know I guess podcast is. is the format it can be distributed in. But it is set up. It is a radio show. It's produced. I mean, apart and, from the first few episodes, which were purely just uploaded to SoundCloud, it, it's it's always been broadcast via some something right. somewhere so you, um, you currently are broadcasting yeah. on uh deep space radio is yeah. that right based in detroit Amazing, yeah how's that's that going it. yeah really good those guys are it, i mean it, it really feels like the the show's found the right home to me uh yeah i mean it's one atkins is one of the guys behind the, the station so that's a real I'm still getting over that, man. It's been over a year, and I'm still I'm still freaked out. Seems by Seems like a good um, group of people to be involved with, then. Yeah, the re- I mean, the behind the scenes guys. I mean, it's, it's a small team, like any of these things, but they're really good. You know, really passionate. Um, you know, they really. Uh, yeah, they, you know, they're doing they're doing it all for the right reasons, kind of thing. Definitely. So, um, yeah, it's it's working with those guys is great. So the shows that the archive is played. So there's an archive show every Friday. And then there's a new show once a month as well. I don't do it weekly anymore. I, I, I can't. <laughs> it's a lot. But um, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, man. But but yeah, I enjoy, you know, I, 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 the way I hope it works out is that you can look back on it as a, it's kind of a, I don't know, you know, like, yeah, you used to have the Encyclopedia Britannica thing. You this is, thing? you're creating a historical archive. This is the, that's what I hope it's, I mean, yeah. some people have very kindly said that, and I, I hope that is what it's turning into, because I want it to be more, you know, there's, there's, with the greatest respect to people who do this, but there are thousands and thousands of one hour mixes uploaded to SoundCloud and whatever every day. And it's really cool, but I, I want, I, I really want to sort of mark, you know, the, the, the depth behind the music, the person behind the music, the influences, you know, who sparked off their career. Yeah. I, I so think yeah, I, I, it's, I've done a good it, job man. of that. I, I'd say you're well on your way to achieving that. Thanks man. I appreciate it. We're coming up yeah, cool. fast on two o'clock. It's one fifty-four, and we still have music to listen to. And uh, we're going to have to start narrowing it down a little bit. Um, that's okay. Let's let's see. We've got Detroit's filthiest, which is that's going to be fun, and Des Williams and 
Frank or Frank Cartel? Frank? Frank? It's probably Frank because he's French. Cartel. I've always said Frank. He's a, he's a favorite of mine. I really like his stuff. And well, I think you got you bought the vinyl from this. Uh, oh, yeah. One of his albums. This, this, this came from. The white vinyl. It's up to you, man. We can put on whatever you want. The, the, one, the one I would say we should play uh, if we do get time is the Bass Junkie track because that was the most recent release. Yeah, let's do that. Let's jump into that. And it'll wake people up a bit. Sure thing. Another heavy one. It is. But yeah, Bass Junkie is somebody that's been around. Definitely. Yes, yeah. Some serious history there. Yeah, no, I, I love this. And, he, and, he's, and he's another friend now. I mean, I've got an email going back to like the early 2000s between me and him when I was trying to buy a CD off of him. So it's quite it's quite funny to look back on stuff like that and, and, and see that you're releasing his music. But yeah, he's, he's great. And, Remind uh, me where Bass Junkie is located again? He's here in the UK. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lives uh, just south of London. And I know I have some records from way back somewhere. I'm trying to think of what mm. they're called. What's an early Bass Junkie record that stands out to you? See if I if I remember what you. Blimey, um, <laughs> ro- Robot Movement. There was um, Comply was an album. Uh, oh God, you put me on the spot there. Sorry, Sorry. I mean I, I I shouldn't have done that. No, no, I, you're okay. I'm just shit with names if I don't have them written down. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. I'm sure I have I have a lot of records to go through to see if I can find what I'm thinking of, and I totally can't remember the title, but I know it's there yeah, yeah. somewhere. But, but yeah, I'm really this... pleased. I've got the record here. I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. Oh, the, that's the original, nice. That's just perfect. Original painted artwork. Do, do you, uh, you worked with a bunch of different visual artists to do covers, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I've I've done quite a lot. Oh, okay. Myself, but I've uh, uh, but when it comes to vinyl, uh, no, nah, that's not quite true. Yeah, I mean, a bit, a bit of a mixture, really. When I when I did the first release, I wanted somebody professional because at right. that point I had no, I didn't even know how to start Photoshop up. You know. I've learned that over the years. Um, but yeah, yeah, just various different people. Uh, one of my favorites is this one, which was, uh, this is Umix, or Zeta Reticula's EP. And that- That looks great, that, I like that. That's by a guy called Leho Silva. Silvo, Silvo, mm-hmm. I can't pronounce his name. But he, um, yeah, I mean, that's just very, very cool. But yeah, no, it's nice. You've got to love the vinyl, it gives you the chance to do that. This track, it's yeah, called this track is, Blast it's Them called, to Infinity, and it. it sounds like that. It's like, it does, yeah, and, it, and it does. Just turning it up, banging it out. It's kind of galloping forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Mm. You've kept up the quality, that's for sure. Thanks, man. So we I'll have a winner to. for our giveaway. Hey. Andrew Huffman, congratulations. You have won yourself a copy of Isotope's Vocal Synth 2. And before we run out of time, I believe you had an idea for a, a giveaway of your own. Yeah, yeah. Is that still on the table? It's still on the table. Uh, so it is. I've got it here. So it's a copy of the Zeta Reticular EP. That. The base agenda t shirt, extra large. If you're not big enough, pattern up. <laughs> all right, I've been working on that. that. Yeah, man, I think we all have. We've got some and, uh, COVID weight to get rid of. Yeah, no, oh, don't. Sorry, Let's not go there. That's why okay. I'm on the gin instead of the beer. Too personal, and then, um, yeah, a couple of stickers as well. Nice. So, what do people need to do to uh, qualify for your giveaway? Yeah. I see, I, I haven't got that far in my thinking. Uh, <laughs> if they email, it's probably going to be easier to email me, yeah? So if they email touch base, so it's touch, B A double S, at baseagenda.co.uk with the subject Selway, I'll pick, a, I'll pick a winner out in a couple of hours' time. So T O U C H B A S S at base agenda recorder.co. Uh, UK. I'll cut it UK, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so I've just typed it into the chat. Hopefully, uh, oh, there you go. YouTube won't kill the link. Cool. But uh, there it is. And uh, I'll pick. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll pick somebody. I'll pick somebody out tomorrow. It gives people. A, it gives people a few hours to. Nice. If they want to get involved. Thanks for that. Very the generous. Only, the it's... only thing with the the vinyl is it's got a hole through the middle, which. Yeah, I don't know. know. It might not work. But, you know, if you can, if you can live with that. If you have a record player, even. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, that helps too. Yeah, I'm not giving away. John's going to give away a turntable next week. Hey. <laughs> Hush. Oh, no, we didn't rehearse that bit, did we? <laughs> no, we didn't. Yeah. We've, we've made it just about to two. I think we did pretty well today. It's been fun hanging out with you, actually. Likewise, man. Appreciate and, the invitation. Uh, uh, yeah, it was kind of a way of, you know, flipping the tables, you know, since I was a guest for you. And I was really, mm. that was a really cool experience. I enjoyed, you know, answering your questions. And uh, I, I noticed you, you posted it on Facebook uh, the other day. So, I don't you know, know. I was amazed. It's like four years ago, man. I don't know where that time's gone. It's crazy. Completely just, I don't know. Like, I look at my kids and then I, I look away and then I look back at them and they're like twice as tall. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. No, this has been really cool, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and you're I, welcome. Everybody who's tuned in, man. I appreciate all you guys too. Thanks Thank to you. everybody in the chat. Congratulations again to our winner. Um, again, check out. Uh, 343labs.com and 343labs.de if you're interested in you know music production classes synthesis classes all of that and of course a reminder again about our sample challenge go to our discord to find out more there that link is also below and uh, that is it for today uh, thanks one last time to Andy Barton from Base Agenda Records it's been a real pleasure to have you on so I'll see you guys again next week adios cheers cheers